Hey, in, a, in a similar vein to a month ago when he announced the, the training squad, can you just talk us through the decision to leave out the senior guys? Uh, well, as, as we said, we've drawn a line in the sand after the line series um, and we're looking to produce a, a younger squad to get ready for the World Cup. Uh, it doesn't mean those guys are, are out of the picture. You know, I've been pleased with the way they've responded at club level and spoken to them this morning and they know where they stand. So at the moment we're running with this young but very good squad. They've been in pretty good form for their clubs. Were any of them close to forcing their way back into the squad? Yeah, well, we need consistency in that area, and uh, they're all they're all improving and doing well. So that's that's a very good sign. And Nick Dolly and Tommy Freeman are making their first appearances. Can you just talk us through what you've seen in them? Yeah, by being impressed by both of those guys, Freeman over two seasons. Yeah, he's a big, strong, strapping lad. He's got good pace. He's got a good feel for the game. He can play fullback or wing. Um, so I've been watching him for a couple, couple of seasons. Dolly's just come into the Premiership this year. He's an industrious player. Uh, been very impressive for Leicester and, and we feel like he can make the jump to Test Rugby. Thanks, Eddie. Thanks, Duncan. Uh, James, we'll come to you next, please. Eddie, there's eight players who made their debut in the summer, four uncapped players. Does it almost feel like a New England squad you're building now? Uh, well, well, I don't think it's a New England squad because there's a, a number of players, a number of good players uh, remaining from the previous World Cup campaign and they'll continue to be important. But what we've done is added, added some youth, some enthusiasm and, and the opportunity for the squad to keep getting better. We know we have to keep improving. And we've got five camp, camp, campaigns to the World Cup and this is a, the most important one because it's the next one. And so those young guys are going to add a lot, of, a lot to the squad. And the other question I wanted to ask was about Owen Farrell. He's been confirmed as, as the captain for this autumn. Was that an easy decision for you to come to? He's the best man for the job. Thanks, Eddie. Thank you, James. Uh, Will, we'll come to you, please. Will Kelleher. Hi, Eddie. Hope you're well. Um, a couple of admin questions, if that's all right. Um, a few injuries over the Premiership weekend. Luke Kaldicki, Barra Toji, Anthony Watson all went off. Do you have updates on how they are and if they're available to join up with you next week? Uh, well, they'll all have scans over the next week and we'll find out uh, in due course, mate. Is someone like Jamie George on standby if Luke Kaldicki isn't fit? Uh, we'll worry about that. Uh, if that happens, mate. Okay. Just in terms of the candidates for number eight, now that Billy's not in the squad, how do you view the pecking order there? Uh, well, this is a training squad for Jersey, from which then the Tongan 23 gets picked. So they're all in the mix. They've all got a chance to put their hand up in Jersey. Can you talk to us about the the merits of guys like Alex Dombrandt and Sam Simmons, what you see in both of those guys? Uh, well, they're different sort of players, as is Callum Chick. You know, Callum Chick's a more traditional uh, game line number eight, strong defender around the ruck. Simmons is a bit of a, a hybrid 7-8, um, but has been developing his game nicely, particularly in the defensive area. He's got great acceleration and good pace and power. I think his time with the Lions has, has put a, a few finishing touches on his game. Um, and Don Brandt's uh, more of a hybrid eight come back who's got great running skills in the open. He's worked, again, worked really hard on his defensive game. I thought his defensive game against Sale a week ago was absolutely outstanding. So he's adding to his game. So it's great competition between those three. Lastly, from me, England rugby fans will look at the presence of Marcus Smith in the squad and get excited about the way England can attack. Do you think he can inspire a new attacking way of playing for England? Well, first of all, he's got to get in the side, mate. Uh, that's the number one step, um, of which he's one of 34 players to get into 23. So if he does that, then there's an opportunity for him to add, add his own flavour and his own strength to the team. Julian, we'll come to you, 
Yeah, um, just following on from uh, Mark about Marcus, I just wondered. You hear a lot of coaches say they like players to see, you know, see things as they are and play it, play it as it lays. Is that what you like from your fly half, or, or do you prefer them to be a bit more controlled? Well, I think the role of a ten is is to be the bus driver and the conductor. So he's got to he's got to create a, a route for the team. He's got to create a a place for the team to go and then be able to get the team to play to that to play to that beat. So it's a combination of, of being a team player and being an individual player. Um, and every 10 I've coached is different. Uh, no 10's the same. So to say I like a team uh, 10 to do this or that, I think it's not a relevant question, mate. Fair enough. Thanks, Julian. James, we'll come to you next, please. Thanks, Mark. Um, Julian, you said you like to just going on from Will's question about housekeeping, could you just clarify for us um, what you see? There's a number of hybrid second row combined sides that you've picked. Um, you've picked Dr. Davidson as somebody capable of playing on both sides. And within the back, there's a number of hybrid players that can play. Oh, James, I think we've lost you there. I don't know if you can hear us. Uh, well, I've got the hybrid bit. Um, yeah, we, we've got to name a squad. We've, we've, we can name up to 36 players. We've decided to go with 34 players. Um, so within that, we need the flexibility to be able to cover a number of positions. Again, moving towards the World Cup with a squad of 20, uh, 33, we want to make sure we use every campaign as a dress rehearsal for the World Cup. So those sort of players who can play multiple positions are very important. Is Courtney and Jordan still contenders for starting locks as Test match players? Uh, Courtney and who was the other one, mate? George Martin, mate. George Martin. <clears throat> uh, Courtney's definitely a test lock. George Martin's, uh, at this stage, not a starting test lock. Thanks very much, Mike. Thank you. Matt Hardy, we'll come to you, please. Hi, Eddie, how are you? Um, just a few really quick ones. Um, what are you looking for out in Jersey? What what kind of player are you looking to, to maybe sneak into that 23 from the, from the wider squad? Well... The first thing about Jersey, it's an opportunity for us to get together as a team. Yeah, we've got a, a tough autumn campaign. We're playing against two of the three sides have been together for three months. So one of the most important things for Jersey is, is finding some cohesion in the team, uh, finding a game that suits the team. Um, and then we're looking for players to select themselves, mate. You know, players select themselves. I don't select them, they select themselves. The so players who 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 are absolutely brilliant at the basics, who understand their role in the team, who understand their role to improve their teammates are the, are the guys who are going to flourish. And you mentioned um, Australia and South Africa have been together for a few months. Um, are you worried about your test match fitness as a squad? Are you worried about maybe being slightly lethargic or, or, or do you think you're ready to take it to, to the three sides you play in the, um, in the internationals? I find that a bit of a strange question, mate, uh, to be honest. Lethargic. Why would an English team be lethargic? Just more so the lack of playing time together since the summer. Um, is that something you're you're worried about rather than, or are you just willing to attack those those three sides? Well, I'm uh, I'm never worried about things I can't control, and I can only control the to the time that we have with the team, and the time that we have with the team we'll use really well. We've got a really good camp play a ca uh, plan for Jersey. We'll maximise our training time. Then we've got a, a great week against Tonga and we'll prepare well for Tonga and then we'll worry about the other two sides after that, mate. Cheers, Eddie. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks, Matt. Uh, and we'll finish up with Simon and then Luke. Thank you. Simon, we'll come to you. Hi, Eddie. Just, uh, just one from me. Just wanted to ask about Louis Liner at Harlequins. obviously been in training squads before. What's he got to do to make that next step to be in this 34 and um, how close was he to being in your squad? Yeah, look, I think he's done very well, mate. I spoke to him this morning. I won't share you the, the contents of the conversation because it's between myself and, and, and Lewis and, and he knows what he needs to work on. He's a young guy. He's played, I think, 16 or 17 premiership games. 
He's right at the start of his career. He's done really well to get in the, the wider squad. He hasn't made this squad, but he's very close and he just needs to keep improving. There's, there's various areas of his game that he needs to tidy up a little bit. He understands that um, and I'm sure he's going to do it, mate. Thanks, Eddie. Thanks. And Luke, we'll finish with you. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, hi, Eddie. Um, I had a question. Uh, on the weekend, we saw Henry Slade put in a particularly good uh, what's being called a 50-22 touch finder kick, which ended up having a big impact on the result. Specifically, that rule, how, how, mu how much is that affecting your thinking or how much time are you spending thinking about that, that tweak to the rules this season? Well, I think what, what we're seeing so far is, is probably an average of one a game. But for every one a game, I think there's 60% of those lineouts then result in tries at the moment. Um, so it's about, it's about having an attacking mindset, and that's one of the things we're looking for the team to have a really aggressive attacking mindset, and that means attacking the space. Um, so that will be part of what we look at, but again, it's, if you look at the, the whole context of the game, it's only a small part of the game. And so, but England fans can get excited that you're going to be looking to play a more attacking game with more width, is that fair to say? Uh, well, they were your words, not mine, mate. We want to play it really aggressively, mate. And we want to play to the strengths of the players. Thank you very much.